Thank you for taking the time to learn about Workplace Pride's 2023 Global Benchmark. In the next few minutes, I'll share information with you about the Global Benchmark and specifically what is changing from the 2022 edition. Let's get started. First of all, a bit of background. 2023 is the 10th year that the Global Benchmark is providing information to help participants see where they can make progress for LGBTIQ employees in the workplace. The 2023 Global Benchmark survey is comprised of 49 questions in total, 28 of which are multiple choice scoring questions. And this year, there's also one open question that can contribute to your score. The scoring questions are divided between eight sections, all representing key components of an LGBTIQ workplace inclusion strategy. This year, we've also created a new section that looks at what you are doing around the world regions where you have employees. I'll go into more detail on that shortly. Participation in the Global Benchmark will give you a baseline of where you stand today and will produce suggested concrete actions that can help you improve LGBTIQ inclusion within your own organization. You will also be able to see how you compare to other participants by industry, by sector, and by organizational size, and we help you track your progress year over year so that you can pinpoint where you might want to focus in the future. Let's look at the 2023 Global Benchmark Survey in more detail. The process for completing your submission and for submitting evidence has not changed. The Global Benchmark will be open from February 1st, and you have until April 21st to complete the information and gather evidence and submit it to us through the link that we sent you. We will do the analysis and comparisons and we'll provide you with your individual results in June and the overall results uh, and celebration of the highest scores and special recognition is released at the Leadership Awards Gala at the end of October or the beginning of November. Every year we work to ensure that the global benchmark takes into account what has been accomplished by those leading the way and continues to set aspirational goals for LGBTIQ plus inclusion in the workplace. This year, there have been a few changes and I'll cover those in the next few minutes. I'll go into more detail in the, in the coming slides, but I did wanna give a quick overview of the change areas here. First, question clarity. What we are asking in the survey has not changed for the vast majority of the questions, but we have worked hard to simplify the question text and to be clear about what we are looking for in, in each item. Question numbering. I know this is a sensitive area. We have changed now to a text-based numbering scheme so that we will minimize changes from one year to the next. We know that the work to organize your responses and your evidence by question depends on clear numbering. So we're we're providing a detailed mapping to help you reference the information that you had from prior years. There's a bonus question this year. Uh, one of the existing open questions from prior surveys that will now be evaluated and can provide you extra points. Again, more details on that shortly. And last, we've created a section for region-based questions. There were existing questions in prior surveys that asked about enforcement of your policies, and employee networks in which world regions those were present. We've brought those questions now into a new section uh, and added two additional region-based questions. The two additional questions are, are optional, will not be scored in 2023, but we do hope that participants will complete those questions as they really will help get an even clearer picture of where you're doing great work and where you might want to focus. So let's look more specifically at the changes in the questions. First of all, the overview, you can see here how the 2023 survey is organized. The questions themselves, again, have not changed for the most part, but the language has been clarified. The question numbers are now different than in the past. For example, question 1-1 in 2023 was numbered as question 14 in 2022. You see here the overview, and there's also a link at the bottom to a detailed mapping that you can use when referring to your own records of answers and evidence from prior years. There are now, as we look at the bottom and the summary of this chart, there are now 29 questions that contribute to your overall score. That's two more than last year. Neither of those two is a new question. They have both been included in the survey for several years, but were not until now included in the scoring. 
We'll go into more detail on those shortly. The survey also has two new questions, bringing the total number of questions to 49 this year. Those two new questions, as I said, will not be scored, and we'll also go into more detail on those almost immediately. So uh, we've added a section, a bonus section, with one open question. This was an open question that uh, was not a new question. It was question 43 on the 2022 survey, as you see here. But we know that leading organizations are finding ways to make a difference in challenging locations. And this question, we're looking to hear how you have taken action to support LGBTIQ plus employees in countries or locations where there are challenges. For example, the Middle East or Russia or Poland, to name a few. The other question which we are now going to score, which has not been scored in the past, is one that, that appears in the region-based section. This was in the employee network section in the 2022 survey. And we've also slightly adjusted this question. So let's look a little bit more carefully at it. Here, we're looking to know where, in which regions of the world, do you have an active LGBTIQ plus employee network or where you have run specific LGBTIQ plus initiatives? We've added that LGBTIQ plus initiatives part to this question because we acknowledge that there are locations where it may not be safe to participate openly in an LGBTIQ plus employee network. But we do know that leading organizations are finding ways to make progress even in those locations by running initiatives and focusing in different ways. So we wanted to bring this into the global benchmark. The two new questions that were added also in the regional based section are here. We we're adding these because we really want to be able to provide a more complete picture of where the international organizations are doing that great work or where they might want to focus. As, it, as I said before, these questions are not scored in 2023 because they've just been added. The first of these, Regional 3, asks you to indicate in which regions you provide specific benefits for transgender employees who are transitioning. And the second of the two, Regional 4, asks where you have made gender-neutral washrooms available in which regions of the world. For all of the region-based questions, and there are four of them, one about in, uh, your LGBTIQ plus policies, one about the employee networks, and these two that we listed here, the world regions that you will see listed in your survey are only those that you have indicated that you have employees in that region. And that's... Uh, a question in the demographic section at the beginning of the survey is demographics 11. We ask you which world regions do you have employees? Only the check boxes that you've checked there will appear in these four region-based questions. Now let's look at the other changes. Also in the demographic section at the beginning of the survey, we ask you to describe the uh, which sector your activity, your which industry sector your organization uh, fits into. We've moved this year to a European and, and United Nations standard for industry classification. We've done this because our, our the, the number of organizations participating continues to grow in the global benchmark and it was time to move to a standard. A few examples, it is a longer list here. So a few examples that I've pulled out just very quickly, governments, ministries, and municipalities would fall under O, public administration, defense, and compulsory social security. NGOs and civil society organizations would be, for example, Q, human health, and social work. And hopefully the others are, are clear to all of you. There's also a link provided to the website of the standard in the question itself if you need more information. Now let's look at the scoring questions, which we updated. Uh, first, in the business and supplier engagement section, question 7-1 asks about how you engage with suppliers. We've added here an additional option to ask if you've actually uh, included LGBTIQ plus inclusion formally in your supplier or vendor selection process. The other question in this section, 7-2, we would like to understand how your organization shows that you're LGBTIQ plus supportive and shows that externally. Um, this is a, a revamped question, so uh, we want to look at it a little bit more carefully. We've identified four specific uh, ways that that could happen or the ways that an organization could do that. So recruiting materials. Did you highlight your LGBTIQ plus 
policies and practices in your recruiting process or your recruiting materials. Second is supplier diversity. Did you consider LGBTIQ plus when you evaluate potential vendors or suppliers? The third is organizational growth. Did you grow your business or your organization specifically by engaging LGBTIQ plus customers or stakeholders or constituents? And lastly, social responsibility. Were there LGBTIQ plus actions in your corporate social responsibility or sustainability initiatives or reporting? Moving to the last section of the global venture, the last of the four scoring sections, societal impact. This is section eight. So the first question, 8-1, we want to hear about what you've done externally in terms of community activities. We've added here also a new option where we ask specifically, have you support, have you done work to support LGBTIQ plus businesses? The section que second question in this section, 8-2, we've updated one point to see if you've actually actively collaborated with LGBTIQ plus community through concrete projects. This was a refinement, a sharpening of this question compared to last year where we talked about, have you developed plans or worked? But now we were trying to be more specific and look for an active collaboration through concrete project. Similarly, the last question in this survey, we've sharpened two of the items here. The first, we're going to look for an actual engagement with an LGBTIQ plus advocacy organization, as opposed to last year when we talked about developing strategies. And the second option is actually a differentiation with the uh, with the checkbox before. So the the updated one, we we're looking to see if you've actually independently acted in the public sphere. Uh, to improve LGBTIQ plus rights or equality. The, uh, and this, we want to differentiate from the option just one above that, the existing option, which hasn't changed since last year, where we ask if you've actively participated in coalitions or joined an initiative that was maybe driven by another party. So the, the update on this lower item is really to look at acting independently uh, as opposed to uh, joining an existing coalition. Hopefully that's clear. So that's really the changes um, in, in some level of detail. I hope that was helpful uh, for you. A couple points before we close here. If you haven't already registered for the Global Benchmark, here's how you do that. You go to workplacepride.org on the internet. You click on Solutions and then on Global Benchmark, and that will open a page where you can click on the button to go to the registration form. Fill in your name and organization to submit your registration. Uh, we will confirm your name as a known contact if you're a member, and if not, we'll reach out to make sure that everything's in order. And after that, you will receive a survey link via email and a separate email with a password so that you can open your survey. There will also be some supporting information attached to those emails. If you would have any questions uh, through this process and you're a Workplace Pride member, please contact your relationship manager who can definitely help you. If you're not a member, you can email us at benchmark at workplacepride.org and we'll do our best to get back to you as soon as we can. Thank you. We look forward to your participation in the Workplace Pride 2023 Global Benchmark. And thank you for working to be an inclusive workplace for LGBTIQ plus people around the world.